Hello there, let's talk today about Hike Vision IP camera configuration. As you can see, I have my Hike Vision camera already connected to my switch. It's a PoE switch, power over Ethernet that powers the camera, and also it's connected to my computer. So here on my screen, I can just bring the software to set up the camera. It's the SADP2 from Hike Vision. I just load the software and the software can find the camera in the network, right? As long as you have the camera connected to the same switch as the computer, uh, the computer can broadcast and find the camera using the SADP2, right? So pretty easy. And here, as you can see, it finds the camera with the default IP address, which is 192.168.1.64. And here's the camera is inactive. The first thing that I have to do is activate the camera. So when I click here, I can activate the camera. Remember something important, right? Here I have the default IP camera, the default IP of the camera. So basically I need to have the same IP range on my computer. If I come here to my computer on network settings, I can open the internet network settings, come here to the ethernet port and adapter options. And here I have the ethernet port, right? If I right click and go to properties, here I can confirm on the internet protocol version four on properties that I have this IP address, 192.168.0.160 which is in a different range of the camera because the camera has one here, right? One dot something. So I also have here on advanced the option to include a new IP address, which I did. I can just add a new one here. For example, one and two dot one six dot one dot one sixty, which I did already. So now I have two IP addresses on the same computer. Then I have the same range of the IP camera, so I'm ready to go, okay? If you don't, just add a new IP there and you can access your camera. So back here to the SADP2, I have my camera inactive and I can just click here and give the camera a password. So let me just type here a password. I need to type it twice and activate the camera, okay? Click here to activate the camera, the device is activated. And then now I need to just insert here some uh, answer to the questions, the security question. I just hit confirm here and everything is set now, right? So I'm ready to go. The camera is active now. I double click and then I can use a web browser to set up the camera, okay? So for the first time, I need to log into the camera using the username and password that I just created there and then just need to wait for a while, the camera loads, and I'm gonna have image from the camera. Here we go. So the camera is live right now via my computer, via web browser. So it's working, a little bit of latency, that's normal for an IP camera. And then I need to come here to the configuration. As you can see here, I have the date, it's correct right now because I was configuring the camera before, but if you're, it's not, you need to come here to configuration and start configuring your camera. The basic stuff that you have to do first is time settings. So you go here to system, system settings, and come to time settings. And here you need to select your time zone. For me, for example, I need to select here, I'm in the US, and then I can select uh, Eastern time, US and Canada. So I just hit save. And I can also sync with my computer. So I have here the time correct for my computer. I can just click here, sync with computer time, hit save. And then I'm gonna have the correct time for the camera, right? So you need to do the same, or you can also use time zone NTP. If you have an NTP server that you can use like Windows NTP server, and just select here and your computer is going to sync with the NTP server online if your camera has access to the internet, right? It's not my case here, I'm just using manual sync, it works as well. So here's the basic information for time and something important, the second thing that I have to do is come here to the network and select, right? If you want to use DHCP, basically the camera here is connected to a switch and if you have a router also connected to the same switch, the camera can get an IP from the router. That's not my case here. As you can see, I have just the camera connected via cable and also connected here to my computer. So I don't have a router here that can give it the camera and IP address. That's the reason I'm not using DHCP. If you're using a router, you can check here the DHCP, right? So here I can use a manually assigned IP address as well. So here I can change, for example, instead of 1.64, which is the default one, I can change to zero because I have my network also here on the zero network. Then I can test 
and it's testing to see if this IP is not being used for another device. And that's uh, the way you have to do. So the address is not use it. So you're guaranteed that you can use the, this IP address. And here's the subnet mask with the default one for this IP address. And also my default gateway. And I'll, I need to change here as well. That's my router. If I connect a router here, I'm gonna use this IP address, right? I don't have a router yet, but if I have one, I will use this IP address. So here also the DNS server. I can use 8888 and also I can use here 8.8.4.4. Oops, let me just type this again. 8.8.4.4. And uh, I'm good to go, right? I need to get the green checks here. So I'm ready to go. And when I hit here, save, it's going to reboot my unit. So it's rebooting my camera right now. So what I did right now was just change the time and also the uh, camera's IP to match my configuration of my computer or my network, right? And now it's rebooting and it takes like 40 seconds, one, one minute to reboot. And when it reboots, you're gonna need to use a new IP address here to access your camera, right? Or the first thing I can do as well, it's just come here to the SADP software and refresh it. And you're gonna find the camera when the camera is back, right? So you just need to wait to the camera to come back, then you're gonna find it here. So here you go, the camera is back with the new IP address. As you can see, it's active right now and have the new IP address and it's ready to go. So I double click here. It's going to load my web browser and I just need to log in again. So here my username and password and I hit login and I have access to the camera again and I'm ready to go with the basic configuration. Just wait for a while to load the image. It takes some, some time. As you can see here, the date is correct right now. And also my IP is correct right now, okay? Because I'm using here 0 0.64, which matches my network, okay? So that's the most important settings, starting with time. Then you select the correct time so you can have recorded time on your camera. And also network, right? And after that, you can have the storage working if you use an SD card to record. You just need to come here to storage, store management and insert an SD card. I don't have one right now. If you're going to record inside of the camera, you just need to come here and open the camera just right here. You can open it and insert an SD card and to start recording here, right? So if you don't have one, you can also use an NVR to record into an NVR, high vision NVR or any other software that you want to record. But if you need to use a storage, that's the place. You format your card and here you can schedule the settings to record into the SD card, right? So basically it's this time uh, network with the IP configuration and storage and you're, you're good to go, right? And you come here also to the live view to see if everything is working fine and you have your camera working with the basic stuff, right? Other than this, you need to go to advanced settings and do whatever you want there, right? So that's the base configuration for a high vision IP camera. You can start the way and go from there, all right? So if you like this video, please subscribe to this channel, leave your thumbs up and your comments, and I see you in the next one.